Hello, I'm Cressida Cow, author and illustrator of the Hatch Training Dragon books and also the Waterstones Children's Laureate. And before I read chapter 15, um, I'm going to a Power to Train Your Dragon because I'm sitting in the writing shed at the bottom of my garden where I wrote all the How to Train Your Dragon books um, and illustrated them as well. And I'm reading a chapter a day. But before I read chapter 15, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about something I'm so proud to be supporting, which is called Read the World. And it's an initiative that's a collaboration between the World Health Organization, uh, UNICEF, which is the UN's Children's Fund, and the International Publicists Association. And it's all about how books can help you stay happy and healthy at home. This is one of the reasons that I'm reading How to Train Your Dragon a chapter a day is because I find um, listening to books very comforting. Um, it's it, reading books aloud and, and listening to them is, is really comforting. And also it helps me take, reading a book helps me take um, myself to places where I've never been before. You don't even have to leave your home to travel the world with a book. Um, these books take place in Viking time, so they're sort of taking you back in time, they're teleporting. My other books, Wizards of Once, are set in the Bronze Ages, so they take you back to the Bronze Ages. So reading a book is a sort of a way of seeing the world and connecting with other people without leaving your home. Um, on this, In this book, it's just about magic, the children fly on the back of a flying door. And a book is sort of a flying door, that's what it is. It takes you, takes you out, of, out of your home. Because we need to be staying at home. We need to be washing our hands a bit more often than we normally do. Um, we need to be um, keeping our distance from people who aren't living in the same house as us. We need to be um, staying happy and healthy at home, which is why I posted that video of my children exercising the dog in the, in, in the back of the garden, uh, because we need to stay happy and healthy at home. And reading books is a, is a way that we can do that. We're all missing friends and family at this difficult time. We miss them so much, but we have to stay safe. We have to stay at home if we can. Share with me on Insta or Twitter or Facebook if there's a, a book that you're finding, your book series that you're finding um, is, is helping you stay happy. And I'd love to hear it. And use the hashtag uh, read the world. OK, so now it's time for chapter 15. The Battle at Death's Head Headland. Oh, while Hiccup and his team had been enraging the Green Death, Thuggery and his team had been infuriating the Purple Death. The two monsters ran smack into one another um, at the as they met in the corner of Death's Head Headland. One of Fire One's wings was broken in two. Um, parts from her um, experience in the Green Death's grip. Oh dear, poor Fire Worm. But she bravely flew back and made her final speech into his ear as he lay gasping for air in the shallows. Here he is, shouted Fireworm, my master, the purple horror, who will tear you limb from limb and spit out your toenails. And Fireworm flew away lopsidedly as fast as she could with one wing trailing behind her. The Green Death was having a bad day. Ordinarily, a sea dragon ex Giganticus Maximus would not dream of attacking another animal of the same breed. Oh, I'll show you why. Because, oh my goodness, um, sea dragons, yes, they are very, very scary. Yes, the mighty monsters. I have to, I have to show you a sea dragon. Um, I've got it in my book of dragons. Yes, <gasps> that's a sea dragon ex Giganticus Maximus. You can see why they don't attack each other unless they really have to. Um, because they are so heavily armed that the battle risks ending in death for both of them. However, the Green Death had been attacked and cheered up by minuscule creatures who had inflamed and outraged his vanity. This creature, who seemed to think he was tougher than the Green Death himself, had struck him heavily in the chest. The 
back. So the Green Death wasn't thinking too hard. He lunged at the Purple Death with his talons outstretched, breathing great bursts of fire, which lit up the landscape all around like lightning. The ground and the sea shook in great earthquakes as the two gigantic monsters lunged crazily at each other, um, swearing the most unrepeatable oaths in gra Dragonese. The Green Death's foot completely destroyed Wrecker's reef with one blow. The Purple Death's wings caused great landscapes, uh, landslides to come tumbling down from the headland cliffs. Now their job was done, the Viking boys were running away as fast as they could, their eyes popping with terror in case one of the dragons survived the fight. Every now and then, they looked back to see how the battle was going. With ghastly, eerie cries, the dragons slashed and bit and tore pieces off one another. The sea dragon is the most well-defended creature that has ever lived on this planet. His skin was over three feet thick in places and so encrusted with shells and barnacles that it almost had the effect of armour. It is also the most well-armed creature that has ever on, lived on this planet and its razor-sharp claws and teeth can rip open its own iron crust as if it were made out of paper. Now both dragons had terrible wounds and their green lifeblood was pouring out of them. The Green Death gripped the Purple Death around the neck with a deadly throat catcher grip. The Purple Death um, hugged the Green Death around his chest with a deadly breath quencher hug. Neither would let go, and the grip of a dragon is a terrible thing. They reminded Hiccup of a picture of one of his on one of his father's shields of two dragons forming a perfect circle as they ate one another, each with a tail in their mouth. The dragons thrashed around wildly in the surf, all gagging and choking with their eyes popping, their tails causing such tidal waves that the boys were, um, were soaked, even though they were scrambling away from the headland as fast as they could. Finally, with some last heaving shudders and grim gurgles, both mighty beasts lay still in the water. There was silence. The boys stopped running. They stood gasping for breath, watching the motionless beasts with dread. The boys' dragons, which were flying somewhere ahead of the boys, also turned and hung still in the air. The terrible creatures did not move. The, the boys waited two long minutes as waves lapped gently over the great motionless bodies. They're dead, said Duggery at last. The boys started laughing rather hysterically now that the terror was over. Well done, Hiccup! Duggery slapped Hiccup on the back. But Hiccup was looking worried. He was squinting his eyes and straining to hear something. I can't hear anything, said Hiccup anxiously. You can't hear anything because they're dead, said Thuggery joyfully. Three cheers for Hiccup! Halfway through the boys cheering, Farworm let out a terrible noise. Dessert! She shrieked. Oh no! Farworm thinks they should desert. This is a bad sign. Dessert! 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 The head of the corpse of the Green Death was slowly lifting up and turning in their direction. Uh-oh, said Hiccup. The Green Death is going to be angry. There you can see Hiccup saying, uh-oh. And we can find out what happens in chapter 16 tomorrow, which is called, the chapter 16 is called The Finishly Clever Fan Goes Wrong. Can hear that tomorrow. So that's the end of chapter 15 of How to Train Your Dragon. We've got chapter 16 tomorrow. Hiccup's adventures are all about facing adversity with hope and kindness and imagination. And that's why I hope they might be helpful in a tricky time. Please share with me the stories and the books and the adventures that you're finding helpful. Uh, on Insta or Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag Read the World. <laughs>